things we don't know. Putting science in your hands. So it's just down here if you want to try with the... Oh, no. I... Okay. Wait. What is epilepsy? For many of us, epilepsy is flashing lights, frothing at the mouth, seizures. In this video, I want to explain what we actually know about epilepsy and where our knowledge is disturbingly lacking. So epilepsy has been around and recorded throughout human history. And now we know that it's a disease of the brain and we know that there are some genetic links to it, but many cultures still look upon it with a mixture of fear and suspicion. And sometimes it's even thought to be the work of evil spirits. Thank you, my Lord, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Who are you? Who are you? Come out, come out, come out in Jesus' name. Now, epilepsy isn't just for the unlucky few. Almost 1% of the world's population have epilepsy. And 10% of people will have a seizure at some point in their life. Now, that is a staggering number for a disease that we know so little about. But perhaps the most troubling statistic is that a full third of epileptics cannot be treated with modern drugs. So what do we know? And what progress have we made? Well, thankfully, I have a neurologist here who can tell us just that. Epilepsy is defined as having seizures, but what is a seizure? At the most fundamental level, it is neurons in the brain that fire excessively and in synchrony. And this can cause a variety of physical manifestations, from staring, to laughing, and more seriously, to convulsing and a loss of consciousness. Seizures may or may not be preceded by an aura. And this is a strange phenomenon which is recurring and unique to the individual. Seizures can be focal, affecting a part of the brain, or generalised, affecting the whole cerebral cortex. But we can read the electrical activity of your neurons through your skull with one of these. It's an electroencephalogram, or an EEG. Now, why does synchronous neuronal activity cause seizures and loss of consciousness? Well, imagine a, a notice board. When certain lights come on in a specific configuration, then the board displays information, like writing. Now, the same is true for the neurons in your brain, except they're changing configuration hundreds of times a second. Now, imagine if the light on that notice board all went on and off at the same time. The board would not convey any information, and the same is true of your brain. So what triggers the synchronous activity of the neurons? Well, now, embarrassingly, we're at the limits of our knowledge and we're into the realms of theory. So maybe it's an increase in the general excitability of the neurons, how likely they are to fire. Now, if some neurons started firing, because neurons are so heavily interconnected, this could trigger many neurons to fire at the same time in a positive feedback cycle. It could be the chemical composition surrounding the neurons, for example, an increased potassium concentration. This increases the excitability of neurons. So another possibility is to do with the relationship between the two major kinds of neurons in your brain. Excitatory neurons are kept in check by inhibitory neurons. Now, if these inhibitory neurons were compromised, say, in epilepsy, mm. then the excitatory neurons could run away into seizure-like activity. There's plenty of genetic and experimental evidence for these theories and many more, but this is far from the whole picture of epilepsy. And for now, we still use the same drugs for epilepsy, which can have the common side effects such as nausea, weight gain, and memory loss. And still, there's a full third of epileptics who do not respond to this drug therapy. This is a vast area of neuroscience that's fundamentally linked to the intimate way in which our brain works. And yet, these are still things that we do not know.